But let's talk about points for ground fighting now. This is where we, we make a difference. Okay, we validate things by giving them names, don't we? Or giving them some kind of a point assessment. Okay, for years, judo, we haven't given specific names to various things on the ground. Now, yeah, different pins, the concept of osaikomi, we, you know, we've got that, katami waza, we've got that. But specifically turning a man over or breaking him down from a stable to an unstable position, we haven't named that. We haven't given that any point value even. But those are legitimate judo techniques. And like <coughs> Vincente and I were talking about earlier, think of it this way. If we're on the ground and we're doing ne waza, and he's, yeah, come on over here. And he's on elbows and knees. Uh, have, your, have your head facing Scott. There you go. And if he's on elbows and knees, okay, and I take him from a stable to an unstable position, think of this like a throw, only on the ground. Okay, because that's what we're doing in standing throwing, aren't we? We're taking from stable to unstable. We're using kazushi, sukure, kake, and then finish him off with kime, the, the follow-through. Well, that's what I'm doing here in Newaza as well. So, bam, he's down here. I do the forearm, I do the near leg, follow up. Bam, I'm a, I, I just turned him from a nice happy position he thought he had onto his back. So I took from stable to unstable. Well, that's worth something, we think. And you don't have to control him at the end. You know? Don't have to. We're going to talk about that. You Good don't have to? No, you, At the end, you don't have to, and we're going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. But, so I took him, I just happened to follow up the, you know, yeah. in, a, in a Osekomi. You had a question? Okay. So that was worth something, just like a throw. I may have thrown him for a Yuko and wasn't able maybe to follow up with a Osaikomi or something, but it, it, had, it had value. So this does too, okay? Any time I take him from stable to unstable. Here's another position. That's worth one point. So if you want to call Coca red, Coca white, one point red, one point white. Again, in Kansas City, we call the point numerical value, and that would be that. Why do we do that? Because it gives another level of objective evaluation of this match. Okay? It takes a little less of my subjectivity out and forces me as an official to make a very clear objective call. This has, this has value, and I have to assign that value to it. And that's the point of doing this. Okay? So that's what this is about in doing points for breakdowns. I call them breakdowns because you're breaking them down from a stable to unstable. Call them turnovers if you wish, that's fine, but it doesn't always address the things that happen. Here's another thing that isn't traditionally called a turnover. I'm going to do from the bottom, like guard position. I'm going to spin you over. No, I'm going to be doing it. So this is, this is worth one point. Okay, the one point. All right, so I'm here. All right, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to spin under you do a jujigatami. Okay. So I may, I may be a real jujigatami guy, which I happen to like a lot. Okay, grab here. I spin under. I roll him over. Now, was he stable just a few seconds ago? Is he stable now? No. That's worth a point, isn't it? This, the, here's a good judo technique. I took him from stable to unstable. Now, if I can continue on to Juji, I'm there to, as a referee to make that call. He may be fighting this like crazy, and I didn't, but I still took him from stable to unstable. I may go to a Osekomi, you know, something else. So there's a clear situation. Thank you. Just stick around here. Let me use you. There's a clear situation taking from stable to unstable. That is a breakdown. That's worth a point. Okay. So that's why you can fight off your back. Remember the phrase Newaza? We all think it means ground fighting. You know what Newaza really means? Ne is to be in a reclining position. Waza is technique. So what the Brazilians call the guard, which is originally called Newaza, it started from this. This was, this was the original ground fighting of judo. You know, when we saw a lot of more wrestling and sambo stuff, and we saw more of the elbows and knees, this is what we saw a lot in the old days. Speaking of old days, Jerry LaFon has a question. <laughs> That's worth five bucks. <laughs> um, he's on his fours. I get on him. Uh, I get my hooks in. And I splatter him for a coca. Is that a... No, no. That's, that's, I, I've got to get him... That's a good question. We consider that seriously. It's, it's a good breakdown. It's a good breakdown. We really thought, oh, that's... But we said, we're going to be seeing that a lot when they'll just hold him there. What we'd like to see him is get him on his back. So, so, so we, we really... And, you know, that could be changed in the future. As a, but, but right now, turning him to his back somehow is going to be 
the Jefferson, what you're getting, that's going to be the validation that, that takes it from stable to unstable. For the breakdown. Yeah, for the breakdown. Because that also left a lot of gray area there, because I may just have one hook in, like a, a near leg ride, and pop them down, and I look for the referee for that. No, you know, because you'll see that a lot of wrestlers will do that, that, that will think they can get a point. And no, we, we want them more complete. So by getting them onto the back, then we, we, we have that validation so there. Words, and I'll follow up, then I'll, I'll get you to Scott. If I break somebody down and he lands in, let's say, a Yugo position, he's got to be in a, at least a Rosari position. It's got to be, yeah, pretty close. So if I, you know, that's, and that's where I, I'll, I will get back to you. So I've taken him over from stable to unstable. Bam. There, there. Okay, that's enough of a turn. Yeah. You know, but come back up a little higher. I haven't got him quite yet. Okay. You know, I haven't got so I'm the referee, and I'm, that's where you have to stay awake if you're a freestyle judo referee because that is worth something there. And i got to get them over more completely to show control. It isn't showing back control. It's showing control so, in a judo sense. So would, you, would you then say that it would have to be the equivalent of a Missouri? Probably close to it, Jerry. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, to get him more onto his back. Okay. Yeah, but a good clean turn onto the back. We're going to give a point for that. That has a point value. And I think that's a good way to put it, too. Scott, you had a question. I wanted to know what Sensei Lafon is discussing. Mm -hmm. What does it look like in clarification? Does it or does it not score a point? Yes. Show us what he was asking. What does it look like? Oh, well, let's, what, what doesn't score a point, I'm going to do a forearm near leg breakdown. I'm just going to be on elbows, be on elbows. So, all right, so I'm going to take him over, and I just get him to here, and that's not enough. That's not enough. What? There, I've got him. That's one, That's one point. Now, I don't necessarily have to lead directly into a psychoma. It doesn't always result into a pin. He may be a very good athlete or whatever. Circumstances happen. He scrunches out. He gets out of trouble. It might not necessarily always lead to o psychoma. It could and often does. I break a guy down. One point red, o psychoma, because he stuck him into a pin. So you may be, have to, as a referee, have to be ready to make that call. Here's what it would look like. Let's say one guy turns the other. You're, you're good. You're good. We, we see one guy turn the other one, breaking him down onto his back. Let's say red is doing it to white. Okay. One point red or coca, coca red, one point. Osei Komi. Be ready to here, convert. And call the, call the point with the right side. Okay. Don't call. Because they're at the, they're at the score table. They think red's doing the pin might be white. So don't be a one-handed referee. This keeps us from being one-handed referees. You know, and if you are, call the, clearly call the color so everybody knows what it is, okay? Don't be a one-handed referee. That's one of the first, that's one of the first things I learned in any officiating that I did, any of the sports I did, was both, use both hands. Another thing about officiating guys, watch both athletes, you know? Don't just watch one. Don't just call a match based on what one person's doing. A lot of people do that. They just watch this famous person. Well, I'll see what that guy does. Oh, man. This other guy may be doing stuff, too. He's in there, too. He wants to win. So watch them both. That's very important. Very important. Okay, that's just a little refereeing aside. Okay. So do you understand the concept of a breakdown or a one-point value? This really does help change the game in terms of giving us a clear objective assessment of who's winning, okay? We had a, 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 at the Freestyle Nationals a number of years ago, uh, one athlete was down by a four-point throw. Now, I, I will tell you, in those days when they were giving such softy pawns in, in, in the international scene, that would have been a pawn in, in, in somewhere else. But it really was just equivalent to a Wazari. And I was the ref. You know, so you know, I've got a skewed view, I guess. But anyway, it was a four-point throw. The guy, bam, down. Hit him with an Ochigari. Down he goes. Four points, whoever won it. Okay. The other guy was really good on the ground. And he took him down. He went from his back to immediately started working this guy. And for most of the match, they were engaged in a really good Nawaza battle. Now, they did stand up once in a while. They went, things happened. They went right back down. The guy who got thrown initially came back and won the match five to four, all on groundwork moves, because he was so good at it and the other guy wasn't. Okay, and it ended up five to four, a very tough match after five minutes, and but we gave him plenty of time standing and plenty of time on the ground. 
the fella who, who had better than he was happened to win that match. That may not always be the case, but that was a good example of what you can do coming back and winning five to four. Now, if he had been, had been a regular judo rules match, that Wazari would have been ahead, this poor, poor guy would have had to dig out of a hole so deep he couldn't have come back. And that's one of the things I always had trouble with in judo scoring in Wazari, and Jerry and I have talked about this a fair amount, is we like the accumulative points because in a football game, just because you, know, you get a touchdown, now it's worth seven points, but you can score a whole lot of other little points and come back and win the game. You name the sport, that's done. In judo, if you get a wazari, all the kokas in the world, all the action in the world aren't going to get you with that wazari. And, and if I don't like you as an official, and how many times have we seen that, you're not going to get that wazari, buddy. You know, I'm protecting him. So that's what we want to take out of judo, and that's what we are doing with the rules of freestyle and it judo. Takes the referee out of the match a lot more. It certainly does. It takes, yes. Is not as important. As, yeah, as it's still important. Don't get us wrong, but it doesn't hold the weight of everything like it had previously. So that's why that's one of the rule changes. That's why the numerical scores work. Well, that's not judo. Well, actually, it is. They're still doing judo. You know, it's just that this makes more sense, and it, and and, and we have a better chance to see two athletes compete to their fullest. We also, for children and parents who are new to the sport, they know, like I said, seven to four, who's winning, okay? They know at the end of that time, you know, red had seven, white had four, he wins the match. Now